for tier two. Wow. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff here and there's a lot of different things here. I guess I did have another Star Trek item back there that we'll have to talk about and I may move that to another shelf since uh, some of my Star Trek shelves now have more room on them. That might be a good idea. Anyway, uh, let's get started. And it's really hard to, <laughs> to figure out where I should get started, actually. Um, well, let's do these. Uh, I have several Doctor Who sonic screwdrivers. Of course, this is Rivers. Yeah, I zip in that one. Boop. Ah, there we go. We'll use both hands. There we go. I think my batteries are going. And then you open this up and it's got a little meter in there. Should I push it? There it goes. But uh, I love these sonic screwdrivers. Ooh, that one's red now. Isn't that fun? Uh, and then we'll do this next one. This one is the uh, 10th Doctors? There's two sound effects. And these two buttons are so you can do it while it's raised or while it's lowered. And then it's got a pen on the back. Isn't that funny? I believe I got this from Starbase Columbus when Starbase Columbus still existed and had a uh, store, a physical store that you could visit. And then this one, I think I bought this when it came out. This is the 11th Doctor's. I need, and then, you know, the, let's see, is it the bottom? Yeah, there's this, a bottom portion here that you push the button, Frank, and it reaches. Because this doesn't reach the activator anymore. So then you close it up and then you can. And then last but not least, this is an old doctor's sonic screwdriver. It just makes noise. It does not have a spinny function or a light function. But yeah, so I've just got a couple of uh, sonic screwdrivers just laying around. So up next we'll do this one because it, uh, I think it's very cool. My mother is very handy and I, uh, and she loves to knit and crochet. And I found this on a website. I can't remember where. I'm like, look at this pattern, Mom. And then she made it. And here it is. <laughs> so it's a Tom Servo crocheted. The little plastic gumball head. And then she made these out of clay, the hands. Isn't that cool? It's so much fun. I really, really enjoy it. It was the first Tom Servo I had before I bought the life-sized one. All right, next we have these bobbleheads from NECA. See here at the bottom. And they're just bobbleheads of the first Spider-Man movie. Green Goblin and Spider-Man. Um, I think I got these at KB, I want to say. Back when KB existed. Up next, we've got these two Stitches. I love Stitch. Stitch is just one of the most fun characters ever. And uh, for, to me. And uh, so when we went to Disney and we saw I saw these, I had to have them. So here is from Star Tours. Stitch as Yoda, and then Stitch as General Grievous, which makes sense because he's got those extra arms that pop out when he's angry. But yeah, look, he's got his little walking stick, and he's got uh, the green Yoda saber, and then multiple sabers, and multiple hands. I guess we can stick with Star Wars, but I will warn you, when we get to the end there, I'm going to have to move to World of Warcraft really quickly because he does not stand up on his own. <laughs> so here's a Black Series Stormtrooper. Got his blaster, got his long rifle. See, I told you, he, he's not very steady on his feet. <laughs> but here is Han Solo from The Force Awakens. Older Han. Chewie, we're home. <laughs> oh, Han. And here is Han Solo from A New Hope. Look at those gloves. Briar pistol. Stormtrooper gun. And what looks like a holster. And then he's got his, uh, the holster from the Stormtrooper, which I think is really funny. Han Solo. 
But like I said, we'll have to get to this figure now, which I'm very happy to do. This is from the World of Warcraft. It is the DC Unlimited uh, production of the uh, Vindicator Maraud. I took him out of the box because I thought he would be great to display. Little did I know, his hooves are not flat. <laughs> he's got little holes for a stand, but <laughs> he's not flat, so he wobbles a lot. So he has to lean against everything. Um, in fact, this is repaired because the hammer uh, broke off because he fell once. So, <laughs> But yeah, so he's a paladin from the World of Warcraft. This one's pretty straightforward as well. It is Chewbacca from A New Hope. He's got his bowcaster and his book bag because he loves to read. This is fun. I don't know why I bought these. I think these were an eBay find. Uh, they're absolutely hideous, <laughs> to be honest with you. But they're the movie headliners. You'll know them when you see them. They're super posables. No idea. No idea. Oh, look. Suncoast. Hey, remember Suncoast? Remember Media Play? I think Sam Goody still exists. We had a Media Play. Wow. Huh. It's been gone for a very long time. Yeah, look. 2000 Paramount Pictures. But yeah, I, and it's really weird because it's headliners, movie headliners, and only one of these characters has been in a movie. Weird. And of course, you got your board, you got your Species 8472. Yep, yep, right there on the side. Borg, Species 8472, and the Gem Hadar. But yeah. I'm surprised I remember that. Oh, that's a foot. Whoa. Scary. So here's my other Marvel figure from Toy Biz. Um, this, I don't know if you can tell, um, this is the one that really survived the fire. Um, and. <laughs> <laughs> from what I talk, when I was talking about the Toy Biz um, figures a couple of shelves ago. Um, this is another one of them, but this one um, actually kind of benefited because <laughs> he was all orange. He was just orange, and the smoke and the fire and everything uh, gave it, and this is a funny word to use, but Batina, <laughs> both to the trench coat and to him because now he's got these darker crags, and you can kind of see where he's a little dingy and, and like he's been out and, you know, beating up bad guys and stuff. But yeah, this is The Thing from the Fantastic Four, and uh, he survived a fire. <laughs> his torso doesn't twist, but his knees do move, his, his legs do move, he's got elbow movement, he's got hand movement, and his head twists. So he's got all the basic movements. And funny enough, he still smells like fire. So... At specific Rift Tracks events, I've met this wonderful person. His name is Jason Martin. He does a lot of the art for Rift Tracks. Um, and he did an art drop in Nashville. Free art. Right there. And um, he, he says that this is one of his older drawings, and he's not really that proud of it. I mean, that's just fantastic. What a wonderful pose and just... The drawing is so dynamic. It just, it's just an amazing uh, sketch. It just really is. And um, it's in prominent display on that shelf because I just, you know, I, I like him. He does such wonderful work anyway. And then for him to say, well, you know, this, this isn't my favorite. I, just, I, I love it. I think it's great. Let's talk about these signed um, albums here. So this is, of course, Stone Temple Pilots. And I've got Scott Low Island here. And I believe that's Robert DeLeo. And then that is, uh, let's see, is that Dean? And then this is Eric Kretz um, from the band Stone Temple Pilots. And we met them during a warped tour when I worked for the Blitz in like 2002. And we got to go backstage with a bunch of winners because we were kind of mediating. I was a promotions individual back then, a promotions person. And the promotions department basically facilitated the meet and greets and uh, so we got to meet and greet and they were very kind to autograph this promotional CD <laughs> not for resale mind you of Shangri-La Di Da for me and it's just prominently featured on my shelf because I, I just love the band's great I 
I haven't listened to anything that they have done lately, but I do know that this one and uh, their album Core that came out in 92, I just, they're they are great. I love their album. And it, it, they're a great band. And they were really cool to the, the listeners that came from the meet and greet. It was a, it was a joy to meet them. Scott Weiland performed half naked on stage with an American flag wrapped around his waist. It was fantastic. So in the other half of my life, when I worked for Sunny 95, which is a light rock station, uh, I got to meet Richard Marks. And I've been a fan of Richard Marks for decades. I love, I have, I had all of his cassettes <laughs> uh, and the collections. And so I, you know, I'm just a big Richard Marks fan. Uh, we used to, my best friend and I used to sing a lot of his songs. And it was a real thrill to meet him and get him to uh, sign, sign this uh, Days in Avalon CD. Listen up, maggots. Ah, Sergeant Slaughter. I had to meet Sergeant Slaughter um, at a uh, comic book convention. Unfortunately, as you can see here, he signed it and it was this really nice paint pen, but then he kind of wiped his hand accidentally <laughs> along it. So you kind of got his signature a little uh, a little bad there. But you know what? It's it's still really cool. I got to meet him. I got to, you know, tell him how much I appreciated his wrestling back in the day, how his, uh, his face turn to heel turn back to face. And then back in the day, we had this. Um, it was Bigfoot versus Sergeant Slaughter and his... And it, it, it was... I forget the name of it. But basically, they... Uh, we're doing a, um, it was, it was this whole, uh, like 30 minute VHS tape that led up to them doing a tug of war with the, his army versus Bigfoot. Um, and I think it ended up Bigfoot winning one and then somehow the army winning one. And then it was like a draw. I, I don't know. It was obviously not real. But back in the day, I mean, this was the 80s. It was just a wonderful thing to watch because I was a kid. And it's like, oh, God, Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah. So but that is my Sergeant Slaughter autographed pop vinyl. So I'm kind of hiding these back here. Um, these background. Um, I used to, I still, I mean, I used to collect swords. I still have swords in a cedar chest sitting right over here beside me that will never see the light of day again because I'm kind of over that. <laughs> I guess, I guess that's the way to put it. But these, these are not sharp. They're just a little, um, fun little die cast. Uh, just little katanas, um, uh, swords, Japanese swords. And I just, I just like them. I think they're cute. Um, I think they're fun. Uh, they're just, just silly tchotchke stuff that I've got on that shelf. Last but not least, let's talk about the big guy back here. It's Lion-O. Like Ash, um, he has very limited points of articulation. His arm does swing out though, which I think is kind of cool. Um, unlike Ash, he does not have batteries, so he doesn't speak. <laughs> So, but of course he's got the Sword of Omens. He's got his claw. Ooh, wah, wah, I'm gonna, wah, I'm gonna, anyway, um, he's got his Sword of Omens. He's got his uh, Lion Claw. It was a shield, and then he used the these to uh, to grapple onto stuff. It kind of did whatever they wrote it to do. Um, he's got an extra fist here for there, and then he's got the Sword of Omens in its little hidden state, and he doesn't have. Uh, something that he can put on his leg there uh, instead of the... the Because the lion claw used to sit on his leg when he wasn't using it, and that sh was the sheath for the Sword of Omens. Didn't come with that, which I thought was kind of weird because kind of integral to the whole character if you're going to uh, keep the small sword, you know, put away. So one last thing, and I almost forgot because when you get to these ones that are like a bunch of different things, just like the last one, I forgot one um, and did a little addendum at the end. Uh, but uh, this <laughs> is the Sword of Omens <laughs> in a bigger size. Um, I, it, eh, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I saw it. It's just like one of those things that I do. I see things and I'm like, boy, that's cool. And then I just, I grab it, you know, and I'm like, and it wasn't that expensive. I think I got this at um, Toys R Us back in the day. But uh, you push this. 
Yeah, there they go. So you get the Sword of Omens. And then you can push this down and then give it some momentum. And then the sword itself will extend a little bit. Not a lot, but enough. So, yeah, I just saw this and thought it was fun. So uh, I got it. Now we're going to take a cloth and we're going to run it over these things and we're going to dust. 